Hey everybody, it's Robin from Ontario Iguanas. I'm here with Phoenix today. If you follow me, <laughs> if you follow me on my Instagram page, you probably know a little bit about her. Um, I adopted her about uh, three months ago, probably, and she's extremely aggressive. I've been working with her about every day, and uh, she hasn't really gotten much better. But I'm still gonna work with her. I'm not gonna rehome her or anything like that, cause she'll. She's a good girl when she calms down. Uh, she's just really cage territorial as well. So she's gonna help me do a video today basically on um, if iguanas are good pets for children, adults, uh, if they're good pets if you've never owned a reptile before, or just in general what you should do if you're thinking about getting an iguana and where you should look at um, purchasing an iguana if you're gonna get one. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I've been meaning to make a video for a long time and I know I was going to make a video of complete care but I'm actually going to make a small series so this video is going to be the basics if you should get an iguana um, and if an iguana is right for you and then in the future I'll be making videos of like lighting, housing, um, training, all that kind of stuff so I'll make individual videos so I can kind of go in more depth about them I'll make one about food and supplements as well and hopefully I'll have a different iguana with me each time I do a video so you guys can kind of get a better look at each of them. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. My first opinion is iguanas do not make, <laughs> do not make good pets for children. Um, they are an inexpensive pet so in Canada a green iguana looking for about $40, a red iguana is about $100. Um, anything more than that, like the Xanthics and the Albinos are really expensive. But the basic green iguanas are very disposable, as people would say. Um, they're cheap to buy, so a lot of people don't think much about them if uh, they get sick or anything like that. In the States, you can buy a green iguana for like $14 to $24, a red iguana is only about 50 bucks. So they are very cheap to purchase, which means a lot of people do purchase them, even for their kids. Like if you're walking around a pet store, I've seen kids like iguanas and then their parents end up buying them now. And even if their parents don't have any reptile experience and the kid wants it, the kid still gets it, which is a terrible, terrible idea because if that kid does not have the resources and the um, experience and the knowledge to take care of that lizard, that falls back onto the parents. And if the parents have no experience, then that iguana is most likely not going to get the care and the nutrition and the supplements that it actually needs to have a long healthy life. So a lot of iguanas in that situation do not make it past their first year. Um, they become really sick, uh, maybe not warm enough, get dis different diseases, parasites, that kind of stuff. So they are a very, I'm going to say needy lizard. You do need to work a lot with them and you need to know a lot. Oh, she's closing her eye. You need to know a lot about them in order to care for them properly. So I don't recommend them for kids, but with that being said, if you have parents that know a lot about reptiles or um, have the resources to learn about them and uh, are willing to put in that kind of effort to work with the lizard, by all means, they can, she's trying to bite me, they can make good pets, but I don't recommend them, sorry. I don't recommend them for kids normally because the parents don't have uh, the proper resources to to maintain a healthy lizard. So that's why I don't recommend them for kids. Also, they are very flighty when they're little and kids tend to change their mind very fast. So if a kid can't pick it up right away and hold it, the kid, you have a hair in your eye baby, the kid most likely will not like it and I've seen a lot of ads up where um, where people say that my kid's no longer interested in it so we need to get in a new home and they've only had it two or three months. So it's really sad to see how fast iguanas bounce around home to home, don't get the proper care and end up passing away. So it's really sad to see that. I'm always on Kijiji looking at um, all the ones that are for sale. I don't know if Craigslist still sells live animals in the States or not. I don't think it does anymore because of the whole dog issues. Um, however, iguanas, back to my main point, iguanas can be good pets for children, but I do not recommend it unless the parents have uh, lots of experiences or resources for caring for that lizard. Um, lizards, if you've owned stuff like bearded dragons, leopard geckos, those are really good starter pets. A iguana 
is not normally a good starter pet for any age group if you've never owned a lizard before because of their uh, high maintenance requirements and the size that they do get. The males can get up to six feet, females a little bit smaller. Very powerful and even though they are vegetarians, they have extremely sharp teeth. I've almost needed stitches several occasions by being bitten, uh, even by smaller ones but mostly the adults. So with that being said, they are kind of dangerous if they're not tame. Like if she got a hold of my finger, she would uh, do a lot of damage to it. So, and she's actually climbed up my shoulder and I thought she was okay and she actually bit my ear. So they can get very aggressive and as a baby you can't really tell what that iguana is going to grow up to be like. She might have been fine when she was younger but now that she's older and she's bigger she's got this attitude towards her. So it's really difficult to tell what the personality of your lizard is going to be when it's small. I can't say that you cannot buy an iguana for your first lizard. Um, that would make me a hypocrite. I only had a ball python probably about two months before I got sassy. and. Uh, and she's doing amazing, she's extremely healthy, but I didn't know anything when I first got her. I had to learn a lot on the fly. That's not really the way you should do it. You should do all your research prior to getting your lizard and then um, purchase it after, depending on uh, if you agree with the research, if you're willing to put in that much effort and everything. Uh, it worked out great for me. It can work out great for other people as well, but I recommend doing all your research prior to getting your lizard and knowing really what you're getting into. Phoenix is my youngest adult that I have. She's around three-ish now. <laughs> so she's, she's still very aggressive, but um, you can get an iguana as your first lizard. However, put in the research, put in the time to uh, know everything you can possibly for basic care for an iguana and know what you're getting into prior to actually purchasing the lizard. As well as when you're looking into getting an iguana, you really need to know more about the pros and cons for if you're looking for a male or a female. If you're just getting into iguanas and you don't really know the difference between them, do your research because there are very different pros and cons to either of the sexes. For example, if you have a female you can look at them producing eggs each year and not even if they breed they produce eggs almost like chickens they are not fertile and they lay normally once a year those can be life-threatening to a female iguana if there she's not healthy enough if the eggs if there's a problem with the development if the um, conditions aren't proper there can be lots of complications when it comes to that and it can be life-threatening so when you're looking at getting a green iguana there's different places you can get them one would be the typical pet store where you can normally only buy a baby um, that's a couple months older than a hatchling most likely and those ones if you're going to go that route I don't really recommend it I recommend normally uh, purchasing one off someone who's trying to rehome theirs or if you live in the states there's plenty of green iguana rescues as well as a lot of animal shelters take them in too so I would normally recommend adopting but if you don't have any other um, resources around you and you end up going to a pet shop people go in and normally there'd be about four or five in one enclosure and they tend to pick the one that's um, the easiest to handle so if you reach into an enclosure of baby iguanas they should all be extremely flighty and be running away from your hand and difficult to pick up if you pick up the one that's kind of a less fight iguana and he just kind of sits there and he lets you pick him up there's probably something wrong with that iguana. He's probably sick, he might have internal parasites, it's hard to tell. However, if you have the resources to care for a sick iguana, if you've had um, lizards before, by all means, take that one in um, and give them a good home, give them a good start. But if you do not have the resources to take care of a sick iguana, please get the most active one. Get the one that has the most fight in them because that's most likely the healthiest iguana in the bunch. They need to be fighty, they need to be active when they're little. That's how you know they're going to be really healthy and good color as well. Look for um, different signs on their bodies like different marks and stuff. They might have a few burns, who knows uh, what they kind of went through when they were younger. She just bit my blanket. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Phoenix is a great example of uh, what you can get into. She's still very small uh, compared to what she can get. So if she's if she gets up to four feet, 
and she's acting like this, she's going to be very hard to handle. So if you get an iguana um, as a baby, you cannot tell what it's going to act like as an adult. She might have been perfectly fine as a baby, and as she aged, she got more aggressive. Um, this might be the way she is for the rest of her life. It just might be how she is. I'm really hoping not because she's kind of ridiculous to handle, but uh, I'm working with her. I'm not going to rehome her, so I'm just trying to get her wrapped up here. Hey, where's your head? There it is. Um, so the other form of getting an iguana is through adoption. Now, if you're doing an adoption through um, a shelter, Normally, that you have fuzzies in your mouth. Can I get them? No, I can't. Um, if you're doing an adoption through a shelter, you can normally know a little bit more about the iguana um, and its uh, care, its uh, temperament, and stuff like that. So, it, normally, that's a better route. If you are doing. Just dog hair in your mouth. If you are doing a, a rehoming, so if you found someone, say on Kijiji, that's selling an iguana and you purchase that iguana from them. It depends on your situation whether to get an adult or a baby. Now, if you really keen on getting a female, you need to get something a little more older than a juvenile since as babies and hatchlings, you cannot tell. So if you go into a pet store and look at the babies in there, you cannot tell if, unless they're DNA sexed um, whether it's a male or a female. So if you want a female or you want a male, for whatever the reasons with the pros and cons, whatever you choose, you need to get something that's old enough to be able to tell that. So that's why if I recommend adopting because then you know what sex you're getting into, then you know the complications um, and the, the pros of that, that iguana when it gets a little bit older. So that's one thing. As well as normally when you buy an iguana from somebody, normally they don't have the proper lighting I find. A lot of them hook up uh, just the heat light and no UV. So that's a huge issue and if you're the first person or sorry, if you're um, getting a lizard for the first time and that person says this iguana comes with absolutely everything that you need to care for it and it has no UV lighting, how are you supposed to know, right, unless you've done your research. So that's why do your research first and then you can tell whether if everything you're buying is what it needs or if you need to purchase something else. So if you're purchasing a baby iguana, they are extremely flighty, like I said, they're extremely nervous, so it takes a lot of time and effort to be put into training them and uh, getting them to a comfort level where you're easily um, able to handle them. That takes a lot of patience. So if you're not the type of person who has the patience to do that, please do not purchase a baby iguana because you'll probably end up rehoming it. Is and it's what happens most of the time with babies. If you're wanting a lizard that you can go in and pick up on the first day and handle when you get home, you're probably looking at something more like a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko. If you are willing to put in the time and effort into taming and working with a green iguana, um, then they can be amazing pets. I mean, she's, she's calmed down right now. If I take the towel off, she's gonna get all worked up right now. Um, but she's calm enough where I can pet her a little bit. But if you've seen videos and pictures of my other iguanas, all of them are extremely tame. So I have one out of five that are, uh, that are aggressive. So if you're looking at getting your first lizard, I normally recommend getting something older than a year for two reasons. One is they're a little bit larger, so they're easy to handle. And two is because they are a little bit larger than a hatchling, they've grown a little bit more, they've experienced more things, they're more confident in themselves. So if you reach into a cage of a, uh, of a hatchling iguana, they're gonna run away and it's gonna be hell just trying to pick them up. If you uh, reach into an enclosure of a two year old or a one and a half year old or something like that who's been handled regularly, they will normally sit there, you can pet them, you can pick them up pretty easily. So that's why I normally recommend, if you're getting an iguana for the first time, normally get a little bit bigger one. I'm not saying get a full grown adult because then if you have issues with it being a little bit aggressive in certain seasons or during certain, certain activities that it likes to do, then you have a big issue because you've never handled a large iguana before and now you have a very aggressive large iguana sitting on your floor. So it, it really depends. I normally recommend a year and a half to two years old if you're getting your first iguana. Um, they're not as flighty and they're easier to work with as well. If, uh, if you need to get a hold of them or if they get loose out of their enclosure, they're a lot easier to find because if you have ever had a baby iguana 
get out of its enclosure, they can hide pretty much wherever they want. And especially if you have green stuff in your room or uh, in your house or apartment or wherever you live, they can hide and they it takes forever to find them and sometimes you won't find them. So if you have a little bit of a bigger lizard, it's harder for them to squeeze into certain places. So they're normally easier to find if they get out. All in all though, iguanas can make amazing pets if you treat them right, if you have the respect for them, if you have the patience and the time to work with them, you're giving them proper diet, proper lighting, proper enclosures, they can be amazing pets, but it takes a lot of work to get there. So if you're the type of person who works a lot and just wants a lizard that you can come home, feed real quick, and get on with your day, an iguana is probably not for you. However, if you like spending time with animals, you're willing to work with them, and you truly have a passion for lizards, iguanas can make an amazing pet and I do recommend getting one, but do your research prior to and know everything that you possibly can. So that's why I'm making these videos also. <laughs> so just a quick review about this video, iguanas normally are not a good pet for children unless their parents have um, really good experience with lizards and they're very involved with their child's iguana. Two, if you're getting an iguana for the first time, normally get one that's over a year. That way they're easier to handle and they're more confident in themselves. So it's a lot easier on the owner than having a flighty baby. Um, three, if you have an iguana that is aggressive, try to work with it for, reach out for help um, instead of rehoming it to somebody else. Because normally it's something in the environment that is the problem, unlike Phoenix. Phoenix is just an aggressive iguana, that's what she does. Um, but sometimes it's just something in the environment. So ask for help, ask for uh, some support with the iguana community. There's lots of people out there like myself who um, are out for good for iguanas and want uh, the iguanas in the pet trade to be in very healthy condition and be happy with their owners. Okay, so for the next video, um, I'm going to probably have one of my Xanthics in, maybe Pip or Molly, and I don't know which video it's going to be yet. Uh, if you guys have suggestions which one you want to see first, uh, leave a comment below. I'm leaning towards lighting because I find that's one of the most important things to cover as well with diets. So probably lighting and diet will uh, be the next couple videos, and hopefully once a week I will get ones up. Life has just been extremely busy. Uh, recently so I haven't had a chance to put up a lot of videos so I'm hoping to upload this one as well as uh, an update video on most of my iguanas so that'll be just a, a picture video or short videos and clips of the iguanas themselves so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any pointers please leave them below this is the first video that I've really done like this where I'm talking directly to a camera versus uh, showing my lizards and kind of being behind the camera. So I'm, I'm not 100% comfortable with it, but I'm getting used to it. So if you guys have any pointers, please leave them below. And I'm trying to find a good uh, movie maker pro program for the computer. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, uh, please let me know as well. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks. today <laughs> Can I take your blanket off? Are you going to you going to be okay? What do you think? No. Ah. She wants to bite me. <laughs> I'm hoping she comes around, but uh it's hard to tell with her. She gets along great with my other iguanas. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know um, you've seen pictures of her and Billy together. They get along great together. She loves him. But uh, when it comes to me, not the happiest. Even though I'm the one who feeds her and gives her baths. Ain't that right? Hmm? Let's see here. I've only been bitten by her maybe twice. Once being in the ear, and not the most pleasant experience. Let's see if I can show you her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> this is Phoenix in all of her glory. She's so pretty, though. Ow! Not the camera.
rough. She's so pretty, but I wish she was just, just a little calmer. But I'm gonna go put her away. Okay.